Good morning. My name is Daniel Dolphin. We're here at my place in Rain, Louisiana, just southwest of Lafayette, Louisiana. And we're here to start this colt. Uh, this is going to, video will become my wild card entry into the road to the horse. Um, we thought we'd just talk for a couple of minutes at the beginning of this and kind of, kind of, just meet y'all a little bit and kind of introduce myself. Um, I have been training horses for a living for about 18 years now. I uh, started somewhere in the neighborhood of 800 colts, um, starting colts. Uh, cutting horse two-year-old man has been my primary area of concentration. I've spent about five years apprenticing under uh, three different cutting horse trainers. Uh, I also do ranch horses and things like that. I'm, I'm not strictly a, a cutting horse guy. I've also I've started a good many barrel horse prospects, some race horses. Uh, I actually started an Appaloosa racing mare that broke a track record somewhere up in Arkansas. Um, I have had pretty good success uh, with with my colts going on into the show ring uh, in, in cutting. I know that they've won hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, I, I had started Nurse Kitty, who is one of only two horses from Louisiana to ever make the NCHA Future Finals. The other horse was Bob Baker Dock. Um, so, uh, hopefully today I'll be able to get over the nerves of being on camera a little bit and, uh, and allow my personality and my horsemanship to shine through. Uh, we've got a, a colt here. He is a two-year-old stallion. Uh, the Gray Ranch in Benton, Louisiana was kind enough, Mr. Kent Ledoux, I, I called him up. I, I just found out about this wild card a few days ago and we're closing up on the deadline for it here in two days. And uh, I was trying to hustle up a colt that would as closely match uh, the types of horses that we would be getting at Road to the Horse. Uh, so this is a colt that is straight out of the Gray Ranch's Bermuda. Uh, he, he is one of their nicer colts, I believe. Uh, I think they intend for him to go and be shown a little bit once we get him started. Uh, the Gray Ranch is an AQHA ranching heritage breeder. So this colt would be eligible to show <coughs> in the Western Her Heritage classes, which are kind of becoming uh, popular right now. That, that ranch has been around for over 100 years. That's basically what it means. Uh, they are a top level AQHA breeder. Uh, they also have a production sale uh, that's usually in the spring, April or May. I'm not sure of the exact dates coming up this year, but some of this Colts brothers and sisters, I'm sure, will be in that sale. And, and I, I think you can see from the Colt they're raising some quality horses. He's, he's a pretty good size horse. Uh, he's got some good bone to him, some nice structure. He's well muscled. Uh, the Gray Ranch definitely uses their horses even after his show career, uh, assuming he doesn't get sold or anything. This colt would be going into the ranch and earning his living. Uh, one thing I'll say that's a little bit different, we're, we're down here in extreme uh, south Louisiana. Matter of fact, from where I'm standing right now, the Gulf of Mexico is probably 35, 40 miles straight south of us. Uh, so we get into some pretty marshy territory where we've got lots of water, lots of mud, bogs and things, and it really does take a, a pretty pretty stout, pretty sturdy type of a horse because not only is he going to have to drag himself and me through that mud, but he may well have a cow to drag along behind him as well. So, uh, so th these colts that, that come through the Gray Ranches program, they are the real deal. Uh, this particular colt, uh, he is a stallion still. He is sired by Little Till Light, who is uh, out of the legendary gray starlight and out of a smart little Lena bear. His dam is golden, classy, sassy, and she goes back to Dry Dock and Doc Coyote. <clears throat> so he's a, a straight cowbred colt. He's uh, pretty well right in my wheelhouse. So I, I'm, I'm tickled to have him. Again, I want to thank, thank the Bray Ranch and Mr. Kent Ledoux for providing this colt to me on such short notice and uh, hopefully we'll be able to do give a 
pretty good demonstration with him here today. Uh, this colt has been handled a little bit. He has been somewhat halter broke, um, just just more or less enough where they could pull blood on him and kind of do some of those regular maintenance things. Uh, I, I, I washed him this morning. He had, had him in a little muddy pen and he apparently rolled. Like I say, our South Louisiana horses are pretty used to mud. And I was trying to wash him off, just hose him as he was loosened the little pin there. And uh, so, uh, you know, he, he hadn't been, he's not to the point where you, you tie him in a wash rack and go give him a good soap and water scrub. Uh, he's de definitely not, not quite that gentle. You still have to mind your P's and Q's when you approach him. But uh, like I said, he has been handled a little bit. So. <coughs> um, all right, well, the first thing I always want to do with my colts is get their attention. You can see that this horse is pretty well, not not even noting that I'm in the pen with him right now. That's ultimately the first thing I need to fix. So we'll try to get him going around here. pretty well came right to me right there his nose is tipped to me a little bit to the inside so he's not not really doing too bad of a job here right off of the hip heel I have no idea if this colt has been running around in a round pin or, or anything like that there he's cross firing so that's showing me that he's not very relaxed about this he still has a little little tension he's kind of thinking about going out on this side there, he's popped over, so he's starting to relax a little bit. I, uh, I don't really know exactly what all we're going to do with this colt. I sort of have a little checklist of things that I want to have a horse do, but I'm very, very flexible. It's really mostly up to him and what he's telling me as to how we proceed in here, uh, you know, there are certainly things if he has particular strengths that I may not worry too much about today. And if he's got other weaknesses, we may spend most of our time working on those particular things. I think it's very important to be flexible. Make a little hole for him to turn into me there and he's looking at you. So that's, that's not... No. I want his attention to stay right on me anytime he, he leaves me. I want to bring him back. So we'll go ahead and send him off again. Let him move around a bit more. A little lazier on this side. There he's crossfire. And he may have, very likely has been handled a bit more on this side than the other. One thing I do want to mention that I don't hear people talk about a whole lot in the clinics and whatnot is I think one of the most important things that you could get done on a colt and getting them into that broke frame of mind is teaching them to accept and handle pressure. Uh, I have had horses that were babied a bit too much through the process and when you get to the end of the process you still don't really have a horse that you can depend on. Uh, now, now, when I say pressure, some people immediately take that to be a, a little more intense than how I mean it. I mean, pressure is this flag that I'm waving, the kissing that I'm doing to it, this pressure. <clears throat> if he really were, that had never been touched. The simple fact that I'm standing in this pen with him could be an awful lot of pressure.
more important things that I find that, that I want to really get done on this first day is getting that kiss for movement associated in that horse's mind. Uh, when you get on these colts and you go to ride them, number one thing you're going to have trouble with is moving that colt out. That's always kind of your first and biggest hurdle. Uh, trailer loading, I mean, there's loads of times when you're going to just need more life to come up in that horse and getting that kiss in there pretty strong, I find to be invaluable. There are just loads of circumstances and situations where that kiss is going to come through and help me get that horse's feet moving and the life to come up in him. Getting back to talking about the pressure, you know, I, I do come from a background of showing horses. We don't have the luxury of all the time in the world to get them done. We're pretty well like in the, the NCHA. If they're well bred enough to be considered to go to the, the big futurity, we know before they're born the date they have to be shown on. Uh, the last thing you want to do is to get a horse 99% trained and ask him to step up that last little bit and find out that he can't handle it. So that ability to take some pressure throughout is one of those things we want to constantly be evaluating and trying to bring out in our colts. Now, again, the, the word pressure, I don't, I don't mean that in an overly rough way. I always want to be very cerebral about the pressure that I'm putting on a colt. It's always a conscious, measured thing. If you you go out there and you put too much pressure on a colt, that could be uh, what Bill Durant described as overexposing one. Um, now I will say this: we've all overexposed. <laughs> or 100. That's not nearly the end of the world. I think that in these times, that word, that word gentle gets thrown into the horsemanship equation an awful lot. Um, but you're not going to become very, very good in, at this, I don't believe, if you only approach that horsemanship line from one side of the equation. I think you're, you're gonna have to put a little too much pressure on some horses and find out what crossing that line does and where that line is. It's a very important and key thing. I, I think it's also one of the really good reasons to come to clinics and things. Um, Far and away, far and away, the most common thing that I have to do with clinic participants is to get them to turn up the volume on their horses. People tend to ask at some certain little level and their horse ignores, refuses, or doesn't understand, and they tend to leave it like that. And that's not effective. <laughs> you essentially wind up desensitizing your horse to a cue that you want him to respond to. So one of the more valuable tools that I think people get when they get some mentoring or some, some help with their horses is for a more experienced person to be able to watch and to kind of guide them up to that line, teach them how to use a little more pressure and become more effective, but without overdoing it too much. I, I really seldom have people that, that get to overdoing it, but I kind of always do chuckle, because occasionally you'll have a lady in the clinic that's real timid in the morning, and by mid-afternoon I'm going, okay, easy, calm down. <laughs> calm down. And I just love that, because that, 
that person has in, in the space of a day found both sides of the line. Uh, when you're watching pretty experienced horsemen work horses, one thing that, you, that I think people need to keep in mind is that not only are you watching someone who, who has maybe achieved a mastery level of horsemanship, you're watching someone who has made every mistake that there is to make. That's how they became a master of horsemanship. Sometimes people may be a little intimidated to ask a question, thinking that it's too basic of a question. But there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Every single one of us, uh, I hesitate to include myself in that group, but uh, any, any person who has gotten to a pretty high level of horsemanship didn't start there. They were just as novice at some point in time as anyone else. All right, so there, that coat, uh, you can see about where he is. He, he's got some level of comfort, but, but you could certainly push him a little too far at this point, too. Um, I do want to note that, that while I've been just kind of walking around here talking, I am still getting a good bit done with this little guy. I really do like, he seems to be a pretty bendy sort of a horse right now, just part of his body language. Uh, he's obviously a lot less comfortable with me on his right side than his left, but he's still tending to keep that nose towards me, keep his ribs bent somewhat, which uh, is, is certainly one of those key milestones I'm looking for in a colt. If he were a colt that had never been touched, uh, there would probably be you know, that, that point at which I can get here and I can stand at this shoulder. But you can see right now this colt's ear and his eye on, is on me. If he were a, a colt that hadn't been hit, now he's even curling around me. When he does that, he's pretty well giving up all of his thoughts of escape. <coughs> uh, he's not, not thinking about going outside. Uh, whereas like when we were lunging him around earlier, going to the right there, his nose tended to stay out. Those times when he's cross-firing as he's running around, that's telling me he's thinking about being out. But as I'm getting close and around him, he's kind of giving up those thoughts of escape and curling right on around me. Just to help him out with his confidence a little bit right there, kind of like for him to keep me on the right side a little bit more. Whenever he does come in to me on this side, I'm going to back right out of there. And it may be kind of hard to see. I'm really trying to time that where I leave before he leaves. And there we have a little licking and chewing. So we did that twice. He's, I don't know if the camera can pick up on it, but he has for the first time left me on his right side there. And he's a, a notch or two more comfortable with me standing on this side now. If you do have a horse that's kind of tricky about this yielding to you, use your rope, halter, lead, flag, whatever you happen to have. And I'll just start by kind of putting it out here, tempting them a little bit, and then I'll withdraw it, just like that. Kind of build up just a little curiosity in them. Get the power in that little sucker. I hope the camera was picking up all four feet when he made that little jump right there. That was, that was pretty nice. This is a, a, a very stout colt for his age. Probably has uh, plenty of power to 
to launch me into the roof of this barn if I don't handle things better. By the way, those type of comments, if you are out there starting your own cult, uh, I've done this enough, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with the experience, but uh, I would not advise you to dwell on thoughts of getting bucked off as you're working your cult. <laughs> Definitely not the mental space that you need to be in. Another little technique right there, similar to the other side, I'm kind of giving him my back. <clears throat> my back as I'm petting him. That time he didn't try to take his hip away from me, that's good. This colt is, the little stud is coming out in him somewhat. You know, notice he's bitten my flag there a couple of times. Not something I'm overly concerned with in the beginning of things here. Uh, I'm going to start making it a little harder for him to put me on his left side now. We may well be at a point where I'm starting to feel him get a little pushier. Maybe a little of that stud is coming to the surface in him. And uh, so he's probably fixing to get a little more exercise, which is perfectly fine. That wonderful, wonderful saying, I'm familiar with it from Ray Hunt and the Doran's brother there. He kept me on this side again. Make the right thing easy and the wrong thing difficult. And of course it takes about 50 years of experience to implement that little saying. But uh, do be sure that you don't leave off the second half about making the wrong thing difficult. Not impossible, but difficult. See now as he's leaving me, I've, I've scared him just a little bit on this side when I was pushing that flag on his eye pretty hard there to send him away. So he's going to need to kind of settle down over here. I have often thought of, and I don't know that I've really found the words to describe, but I, I view horsemanship very much as like a ratchet. There's always a back and forth that takes place. So I may swing the ratchet over to this end and I may have to get a little something over here. Like a little respect from him, a little motivation to not put me in his safe zone. Once I've gotten that, I have to swing the ratchet back over to this other side and get him comfortable. <laughs> so there's, there's very frequently, for me at least, throughout the horsemanship process, there's some give and take going. Uh, one word I think that's very important keep in mind with horsemanship is the word of moderation. So I don't want to push that ratchet to an extreme on this other side because then I have a whole lot to fix. You just want little bites back and forth. Good. It's just, I don't know if the camera picked that up. He took a little step toward me right there. Very nice. We're also getting him broke to chickens right now. I think that's very, very, very important. You don't want to have just a fair weather horse, you need a foul weather horse as well. Okay. Um, I know they just want this video to be an hour or so. Um, if he were, <laughs> I think we have a trick horse in the making here. Um, if he were a truly wild colt, I would obviously have to spend a good deal of time working with him in that other fashion. Um, <clears throat> frankly, I, you know, I, I like spending that time with the colt and all. I'm going to try to expedite this a little bit more, though. I'm going to go ahead and move him up to the halter and the lead because I, I, you know, I can relatively easily put that on him. And that will allow me to take things a little bit faster. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm 
foresee a, a pretty good little personality in this cult right here. I, I don't know what his barn name is going to be, but I'm sure it will reflect many things. I bet he'll be, I'll be having to take the tarp out of his mouth in a few minutes. Um, I most definitely believe in horses and ropes. There's always an association with horses and ropes. If it's an Arabian that will never do anything with ropes, it's going to have a halter and a lead rope on. And you just never know when that might get wrapped around the leg or something out of sorts might happen. So we are going to, this colt is going to become a ranch horse and ropes will be in his life to an extreme. But even for horses that I know that's not going to be an aspect of their lives regularly, I want them to feel ropes. Ropes also are a wonderful way of that pressure we were talking about. We'll get this thing around his hindquarters here in a second. And uh, that may well be an awful lot of pressure for him. Some colts take right to that like a duck to water. Some colts have significant problems with it and you'd be days working on getting them settled on that. Um, I'm going to just get my, <coughs> get my flag here. I'm going to basically put a little more pressure on this colt, a little bit of an evaluation. I'm going to work on moving his hindquarters and his shoulder. Uh, that, that's probably another area that I vary a little bit on some of the other clinicians. It's important to me to move the hindquarters, but I, I, to me that's just the first step of the game and really mastering the horse's body me has always involved the shoulder. That's when I when I get the shoulder under control, that's really where I start to, to control where that horse is going. So we'll ask for the hindquarters to move over there. Okay. Good little pressure evaluation. Came right back to me. Uh, I don't know if y'all noticed when he was doing his cutting horse impersonation right there, he actually never pulled this lead rope tight. It didn't hit me until he came all the way around here. And then he pretty well yielded and came right in. So I liked that quite a bit. I do not want to be tiptoeing around this colt. He needs to learn how to handle movement right from the start. Also, in a real bad way for me to evaluate what the worst case scenario might be when I get on this little sucker here in a little while. <laughs> I'd kind of like to see what how he moves when he gets overly scared. Whether I'm gonna have a pretty good chance of riding him or whether this is gonna be a real touch and go. All right. Now, he stepped in my rope here. That probably wasn't the best thing for me to allow to happen, but you know, I'm getting something done. He's, he's dragging that around. He's not kicking it. It's not really becoming a big issue. So I kind of like the way that he handled that. So I, I think a big part of horsemanship is just exploiting all the opportunities to show up. Uh, that was an accidental one, but you know I'm still going to use it to learn what I can learn about this coat. So I'm not in a real big hurry to pick that rope up. And it, he's not stepped like in the middle of the coils or anything. He just has one little piece around his legs. I don't feel like there's any real danger going on and also watching how he handled it. It didn't, uh, didn't strike me as though that was going to be enough to have us a big old wreck here. Okay, so we'll try to untrack the hindquarters again. Okay. Might well be this Colt's first real taste of pressure and release. An interesting choice. <laughs> okay. It's gotten a little, little hard for me. Not very soft in the face at all right now, but that's okay. Again, this is opportunity. If I can get him a little scared and then get him to soften up.
teaching him how to soften up. Okay, that was good. He moved well off of me right there at the end. He softened up and came right in. And then he immediately wanted to come too. So I like that pretty well. That's enough for that direction. We're going to go to his tougher side here and we'll see how he handles this again. I'm not going to tiptoe around him. I'm going to step right over there and move him off. And I'll kind of be evaluating how he handles it. Didn't yield his shoulder there quite as much as I would have liked. But that's okay. I mean, if he was already yielding his shoulder, I wouldn't have a whole lot of work to do, would I? That's better. And there come the hot quarters. Good. I don't know if the camera is picking up on this or not. He's getting a little, a little pushy coming into my space there. I just want to back him out. You know, it was a nice thing that this coat was kind of wanting to come to me. But again, moderation. You can, you can have too much of that for certain. Particularly these little studs, not that he'll remain a stud, but I can, I can sense much testosterone in this one. Um, you always want to be watching for those little things that are going to lead into the, the bad things down the road. <clears throat> kind of nip them in the bud. It's when you let them go far because you didn't recognize what they were. That's when, when you have issues. I do want to point out, I mean, I said this coat was kind of hard. You know, I'm holding a big old coil of rope in one hand, and he's not exactly pulling coils out of my hand. So hard is a relative term. He's harder than I want him to be. But he's not, you know, you don't hear me grunting or anything to try to hold on to him. Okay. Now, this has been, like I say, a little bit of stress. We're not really running him around, around all that much, but you see him kind of breathing a little bit hard there. That's all stress-related breathing, uh, which is fine. I, I kind of want, I want to purge that. There was a guy that I worked for one time. He kind of likened some of this silly colt, the colt stuff in him to a boil that you had to lance. He's trying to Trying to get all of that poison out of them, so to speak. That's what all of this is about. Again, right thing easy, wrong thing difficult. Being stressed, that's tiring. Even, let's say you got a family member in the hospital or something. You spend two or three days sitting in the waiting room. You haven't done anything physical, but you're going to dang sure be tired at the end of that. You're going to be emotionally drained. So I need to I need to kind of be monitoring and taking note of this colt because I could get him pretty drained without really having to run him around here. Just all part of reading your horse, knowing what's going on. Now he's actually getting a little, little pushy on this side too. He's not quite getting off of him. I'm going to let a little rope slide. There we go. He actually took the, the opposite lead when he left right there. I kind of like that because that's what I was asking of him. Um, one thing, people, people talk an awful lot about fear and self-preservation in the horse, and those are certainly things that you always need to be conscious of. But those type of things are, are, can vary dramatically between horse to horse as to how, how much of a real motivator that is. Like I, I would tend to think that this colt, once we've done some of the basic desensitization and he's got a little confidence 
He kind of sees what we're doing and how it's going to go. I don't believe this is going to be a predominantly fear-driven cult. I think you'll be one that'll be a little playful, and you're actually going to be having to kind of put some uh, put a little pressure on him to kind of keep him in line. Whereas the more fear-driven horses, you don't really have to do that so often. <clears throat> now, now, again, I'm saying his personality, I'm kind of reading a couple layers into the onion here. It does not mean that he's not going to flip out and put the saddle on him. He's certainly going to have some fear to deal with here today. Uh, one little thing I will talk about there. My... Uh, my perspective on horsemanship is always trying to come at it from a real world perspective. I'm not big into the circus trick side of things. I, I view myself as a teacher and a trainer and not so much as an entertainer or a performer. I mean, I do try to be somewhat entertaining and crack a joke here and there. Uh, what not? I want my clinics to be relaxed and enjoyable, but I don't jump picnic tables and things like that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, there's certainly value in the entertainment portion of horsemanship, just not what I view myself doing. I don't, I don't have anything against the people that do do that. Um, certainly takes loads of skill and horsemanship ability to be able to get horses to do those things. Again, I'm not taking anything away from those people. Um, this horse is one that I, I, I would bet would, because he isn't a fear-driven type of a horse, you could, you could do a lot of those trick type things with him relatively easily. We really need to soften him up on this side a bit more. Um, he's not disengaging those hindquarters quite like I would like, so. We're going to work on that a little bit more directly. Uh, I guess what I'm trying to say there is that no matter how well this ride goes, I'm not going to be standing up in the saddle cracking a bullwhip at the end of this. Uh, not, not again that I have anything against those guys. It's just not my thing. Uh, I would rather just have a nice, good, solid ride and... Uh, Another little opportunity to exploit right there. I just kind of stepped on that rope and actually put him in a little bit of a bind. And I think he handled that very well. I'm going to have a heck of a mess to untangle there in a little bit. There, it gives the hind quarter a little better. get this out of my way. Okay. We'll work with him just a little bit more on disengaging that hind quarter on the left side here. And also on backing up just a little bit. That was really nice. Very soft. Complete slack in the lead rope that time. Very nice. A lot better there as well. Okay, we'll try the shoulder. And pretty well. Really like how he comes back to me each time. Always very readily walking up to me. Um, again, just one of those little things that I'm noticing in this horse. He's going to be one that's going to be a little pushy. So, um, just something we need to take into account. I'm, I'm going to be working with him a little bit on that in just a second. There, the shoulder was a little better, a little better there. Shoulder again. Good. And again, notice I'm not tiptoeing around him. 
kind of stepping right out in the middle there and seeing how he handles this. And he's doing a fine job. This is definitely a nice colt. I like the way he's moving. Really soft right there. Licking and chewing. Uh, his attention wasn't on me so well at the beginning. You can see that's, he's pretty well devoted to me right now. Very good thing. Also one of those things, uh, I think when you watch a lot of the more experienced horsemen, that facet of tiptoeing around horses is not something you'll really see any of us do. We generally are pretty assertive about the way we work. Pretty, pretty quick to get right in the middle of things. Um, something that doesn't get talked about a whole lot is a byproduct of that, something we almost get for free, is the leadership portion of things. Whenever a horse sees you being a little timid with it, you know, you're communicating with that animal and you're probably telling them something you might not be aware of, and that is that you're not a very strong leader. Whereas when I walk right up at him like that and I send him off of me, that's, that's pretty akin to what maybe the dominant ranch mare would do when he's out there in the herd. Uh, and again, this colt needs some of that stuff. So I still want to, again, going back to the ratchet, I'm backing him off, I'm bringing him back in. But you saw him kind of step away there. He's starting to get a lot more conscious of my bubble here. Um, really, really important to see those things coming, be looking for them and deal with them when they're small problems before they get to be really big problems. One other little thing I'll bring up here, I don't munch horses on the line a whole lot, but it's certainly a helpful thing uh, for some of my customers that are a little more novice or that maybe have horses that are a little more horse than what they're really gonna be comfortable with. If you travel somewhere and there may not be a round bin, you can warm them up on the lunge line. Um, I think people always need to remember that the, the key portion of warming a horse up isn't physical, it's mental. Horses don't need such a physical warm up. I mean, if I'm, if I'm about to really go do some high performance stuff, they do. For your average trail ride, they don't need any physical warm up at all. That would be easy for them. That was very subtle, very soft. I like that quite a bit. Um, mentally, you can get a horse warmed up a whole lot better. You jump him off there pretty hard, turn him into you, send him that other way pretty hard, turn him into you, send him this way pretty hard, and basically get him to do it in a figure eight with a lot of start, stop, and come to me. And again, you saw how that coat was stressed when we started on this. There, see, he's yielding his shoulders. I mean, I'm, I'm getting control of all these body parts, but, and I'm getting that horse focused on me, and I haven't even let him make half a circle around me yet. One of the worst things you can do to warm a horse up is to let them get in that pattern where they're just going around and around and around and around. <clears throat> uh, what that tends to do is get horses really bored, tends to get them not paying attention. It's a very good way to train a horse to not pay attention to you. Not, a, not something I'm ever licking and chewing, coming right at me. I mean, this little colt is just doing a fantastic job. Okay, that's probably more of that than I would have done, but I got caught talking. So. Um, a few other little exercises with my long rope here. Love this one. Good little checkpoint to see if they have any problems with their face being handled. Going over the ears, the rump. Make, I am definitely holding this halter in my left hand right now in case he's going to flip out where I've got control of his head. And then I'll step away. That fell a little farther than I wanted, but I'm just holding what I have, letting him there unwind himself from it. <laughs> now obviously, I would like to see him 
make that turn a little bit easier. But I love the fact that he did all of that backing up. That was just fantastic. This Colt has a very natural way of loading his weight up on his hind quarters. Uh, that, that's just, just fantastic. All right, I'll try to keep it a little bit higher. I'd really rather that, that rope sort of nestle on top of his hocks. About like that. Very soft. It's, again, I'm very soft on this rope right now. Use that little club to move his feet, and he comes right through for me. That was excellent. Very nice. He's coming to me, but he kind of asked permission. Like that quite a bit, too. Definitely something this colt needs to do, is to wait and ask permission before coming in. Okay, again, I did my job of keeping it above his hocks that time. Again, a lot of backing up. I just love that. And looking at you as he comes through there for me. Very nice. Okay. Now, all that lunging that we just did there got him softened up. It's a lot easier now for me to get on and stay on his right side. Now, I'm just going to let him out of that. That was my fault. Um, I do want to maintain control of a horse's head throughout this. So as I'm doing this on this side, I'm keeping his head bent to me. Uh, if this was a colt that was worrying more about getting away, uh, this would be a really nice little opportunity for me to be holding him, getting used to me being in here, and then I'll allow him to indulge getting away. I ask him to. Oh, look at that. Very nice. I like this coat. I do. Okay. Do a couple more from this side. I don't know if y'all are noting, but I'm being less and less careful with him each time. I would want to progress this where in two or three days I would even be just tossing that rope over his head and then tossing it across his hip. He seems you know, pretty, pretty darn comfortable with the ropes around his legs. Now we'll notice this direction, he tends to untrack his hindquarters a whole lot more. Whereas when I turn him to the left, his more comfortable side, he tends to do much more of a pivot on his hind corners as he should. Let's see if he'll pivot this time. He did last time anyway. Okay. A lot less untracking of the hind quarters right there. So that all goes with him being comfortable. Uh, it also tells me I can expect when I ride him, he's going to be quite a bit stiffer on the right. One of those things that, that doesn't get talked about a lot in lateral flexion. We kind of start with break a horse, I break a horse from nose to tail. The hind quarters are usually the last thing that I get to. But also when we're working lateral flexion, um, he's kind of leaning on me a little there. No, we're not okay with that. But lateral flexion, a lot of people will work in this neck area, and that's very important. But, but lateral flexion really goes from the nose to the ankles back there. And, and getting them flexing in this loin area is pretty critical to having a horse ride in frame in the more finished aspects of horsemanship, really keeping their hips underneath them. Not getting them good, laterally flexible 
and untracking those hindquarters too much can cause that horse to to want to ride that way an awful lot. So just a little little mental note that I'm making about this colt on the right hand side. I'm going to need to be there. We settle in. Didn't go past him that time until he was ready. Um, I'm going to need to be conscious of how much I untrack him that way. And I'm also going to need to expect to allow him a good bit more time. That was pretty nice. Good bit more time uh, to relax and mellow. One of the worst things that you can do for a green colt is to push lateral flexion too fast. If you, you do it to that degree where they're not softening in their back and you're getting their nose to come around and they automatically are untracking with those hindquarters, that can become a nightmare down the road. And it's fixable, but it, you know, it, it's going to take some, some time and some skill. I'd rather just not have the problem in the first place. Okay. We'll do one other little exercise with the rope here. Uh, I petted this horse just a hair around the girth area and he seems to be okay, but he's not really had any pressure there yet. Again, that pressure, boy, that's important stuff. So now I've got a, a rope I can tighten on him. I can also control his head with this one. And this also, even if I pull on both ropes at the same time, it almost mimics my outside leg. So this is, I like exercises where I get multiple things done all at once. I kind of like the bang for my buck. This has been a, something I've been doing for years and, and it's really a pretty valuable little exercise. And see, that we find he wasn't too crazy about that. Sorry, we'll let him wear that rope a second. Did just have to cut. That's one of the reasons y'all might have been thinking this is an awfully long rope that I'm using. And I actually just cut about five feet off of it to put a new snap on. And uh, if I'd have had my extra five feet, it might have been a little easier to hold on to him right there. All right. Now you'll note I'm going to ride back into. Because something a lot of people do more on the novice end gives them a lot of issues is they have a little problem with a horse like that and they go, oh my gosh, and they back off. And that's not what you want to do. That teaches him how to make you back off. He can go right back into it. And he's probably going to give me that little problem again. Hopefully I'll be able to hold him this time. A lot more pressure, still on a ton. A lot better there. My rope kind of loosened up. That's fine. Now, are y'all starting to see my shoulder control is kind of important? <laughs> I could have gotten run over there, but I can push his shoulder out now. Very critical thing. Also, this colt, I recognized right off that he could be a little pushy. A lot of people get in here, and the pros know better, but I don't know if they say it. And they worry and worry and worry and work on getting that horse hooked to him and joining up. Well, that, that's good, but you can overdo that too. And when that colt gets really scared like when you saddle him he's going to want to come hook up because you just taught him that's how he solves his problems and you wind up getting chased around the round friend by a bucking horse ask me how I know okay try a little more pressure on him there and 
again. We got a little fight. That's okay. Um, one thing I will say here, I guess, the people that uh, break a lot of colts and go to claiming things like uh, only maybe one in ten bucks if you do it right, they're not breaking cow red cutting colts, I promise you. You take ten sons of smart little Lena, Nine out of ten of them are going to book. Not one out of ten. And I don't care who you are or what kind of a great program you have. These horses are just bronchy. No two ways about it. Uh, also, important, you know, you don't take that personally. It's still bucking a little bit. I don't assume that that's because I made some mistake. I don't assume that he's still going to be doing this in six weeks either. Uh, quite frankly, if you asked me if in three weeks if he had ever bucked or anything like that, I wouldn't even remember. This is all pretty much a non-issue for me. Okay. One other little thing I, I kind of like to do. There, he's pushing on me again. I'll let him feel it back here. I don't pull it real tight back here. But there'll be a back nerve on that saddle too. So. I do believe in starting a horse with the rear girth. That first ride, everything's new. Why well, leave something out and have it be new again at some other point down the road? Uh, kind of for the same reason I ride on my Colts with spurs on the first ride. Now, I don't ride them with rock grinders. Okay. Now, he didn't really need that so much. I kind of do like them to get that rope around their legs a bit. There. Getting, he's getting softer all the way around. The backing off of him, he's getting easier. Probably work with that on this side just to hair. Again, remember my ratchet. He's already a little less comfortable on this side. So see, he automatically wants to put me on that other side. So I don't want to let him do that. One thing y'all notice, I kind of was having to tap him in the face a little bit here. Why do you think that horse is actually letting me hit him in the nose? The answer to that is the way the horse sees. I'll try to talk about that for just a second. Horses do have a pretty interesting eye. They don't have muscles in their eye like we and most other animals do. They squeeze and flex and attract the lens. And that allows them to focus different distances. Or allows us to focus different distances. Horses have a lens that is of varying thickness. Uh, what that means is that in order to focus at different distances, they literally have to tilt their head. So if we were to think about a horse that's out in the pasture, something runs across the horizon and spooks them. Every horse in the herd is fixing to get their head up real high and their nose out a little bit. And that's because that's where their head needs to be for them to focus at that distance. We would take this colt here in just a minute, put that tarp on the ground, and we run him up to it. I think all of us know that he's going to drop his head real low, put his nose right down there to look at it. Any other obstacle, creek or whatever it would be, that's where his head needs to be in order for him to focus. Um, that comes into play an awful lot with how we handle horses, but I don't think people realize it. A uh, portion of that is that once you get inside of 20, 18 inches or so, they really can't focus anymore. That's why petting them here is important because this is a blind spot. Okay, anywhere in here is somewhat of a blind spot. So when I was moving my hand right there, he probably is seeing some motion, but he didn't really know I was gonna actually kind of pop him a little bit. Okay, we've hit the hour mark here uh, and left that unedited as y'all have requested. Uh, I will apologize because I, I 
I needed to talk my way through this to kind of settle my nerves a little bit, but that wound up slowing me down a lot more than I, I thought that it would have. The entire time period that we spent with this colt was about three hours. Uh, that That's double what this should have taken me. Uh, I, again, that's because I was stopping to explain an awful lot of stuff. The ride that I wound up putting on him was, was a good bit longer than a normal ride would have been. Uh, I think part of what we fast forward through, y'all don't catch, but this is a little stallion, and he did kind of get a little, little bit bowed up and challenging me at points through here, which again wouldn't be typical, and, and that took a little more time to deal with. So, hope y'all enjoy the way it comes out. Good show for everybody there. Incidentally, an old man told me one time, and I think he's probably right, when they're bellowing or squealing like that. That means he's doing all he can do. And I like to see all he can do. I kind of want idea of what that is right from the start. You see he's not really getting me directed very well right now. And that's okay. It's, it's to be expected. Something I'll, I'll look for getting back here. Got it on his outside. I don't normally like to turn a horse to the outside. But we'll just pull on that rope and see what we get. Look at that. Nice little turn. Okay, here we get to the desensitizing of this colt. Uh, I did this a little bit out of order of what I normally would have. This colt was is not a, a fear-driven horse, and I talk about that a lot throughout the video. I don't know how much of that is getting edited out uh, so I wanted to talk about it here when I put the saddle on him that did kind of raise the the fear portion of him and so that's why I desensitized him after because it was in this case a lot more effective for this colt if I'd have desensitized him before it wouldn't have had much of an effect you bring that up at him and now I really had some work to do and some things I could accomplish so that's what this section pretty much is Here we've worked him past the flag. We now have the tarp out on the ground and we're kind of running him over it. And, and this colt had pretty much zero problem going over that tarp. He will have a few more blow ups throughout here. And they're not really related to the tarp, just more the relaxation with the saddle. Uh, as I've 
said before in here, a, a colt bred this way is one I, I would expect some of this bucking and behavior out of, so none of that was out of line. As is also common, I, I lost a little bit of his attention, a little bit of his um, willingness throughout here. That's simply a, a byproduct of having put the saddle on him and rattled his cage a little bit. And uh, very common, at least for me, to kind of have to go back and, and redo a lot of those first lessons that we had done before we ever saddled him after saddling. Again, you know, not a red flag, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, Y'all will see that this tarp, it was a very windy day when we were working. The tarp actually blows up. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> And he still goes right on across it. That didn't bother the colt in the least. Uh, so the saddle, the confinement, and the pressure are are a lot more worrying to this colt than something as scary as running over the top of a, a tarp. Um, I do think it's important to, to point out the personality of the horse because most people would think even with a colt this green that the, the fear of objects and whatnot is going to be your primary concern. With this colt, that certainly was not the case. Uh, he, he had a lot more gumption than most colts would have. Uh, a lot of that, I believe, coming from him being a little stallion. <coughs> and so that was really more what concerned me about this horse. Uh, so he kind of willfully challenged me <coughs> at several points throughout that were fast forward and through here. And, and it wasn't a wasn't a big deal but it was the kind of thing you needed to notice and kind of nip in the bud or it could certainly get worse and, and I'm sure over the next few days I'll be having to do the same thing but hopefully we will get it nipped in the bud and in two weeks it won't really be such a concern anymore um, just a lot of running around here nothing nothing really exciting I am at this point I'm kind of driving him pretty hard just basically trying to motivate him to start trying to help me again he had gotten where he wasn't really thinking about me and was thinking more about escaping through here so there we go he gives me a little look and like I say we just basically have to rebuild that rapport that we had at the beginning or that we were working on at the beginning Kind of goes back to the ratchet thing. We, we got him saddled. We went on that side. We lost a little something. We had to come back to the other side and and fix it. All part of this deal. Uh, don't be discouraged. Anybody out there that might be riding, you're going to have setbacks. Just because you get a horse to a certain point doesn't mean they're going to stay there. You need to expect them to regress. You need to be okay with that. Continue to work with them where they are, not where you think they should be and just just keep going here I'm, I'm changing things up the colt was kind of getting in a, a pattern and just running around the pen and he wasn't really thinking so I stopped which was out of what he was expecting me to do and that kind of broke the pattern and, and got him to to thinking about what was going on rather than just kind of being on autopilot one of the things you really have to watch for with a horse is those little patterns that they get into <coughs> And some patterns are good, but some patterns are not. Uh, having a horse that's just trained to run around you and not thinking about you at all, <coughs> certainly not a pattern I want to allow one to get into. So don't be afraid to just go do something drastically different and make them think, hmm, what's that guy doing now? Because uh, getting their mind engaged and thinking is exactly what we're wanting to do there. He got a little pressure on him, and he... He had to go express himself again. But that's perfectly fine. Just let him go around. Okay, at this stage, this colt gets into a little bit of a disrespectful uh, sort of a frame of mind. He starts getting getting pretty pushy. That was something I was reading in this colt from the beginning. Uh, he he definitely had a little more want to lean on me than what I I want and want particularly uh, you know knowing this horse wasn't handled much and he's still pushing on me like that, that that's something you need to be watching and it carries through to the ride and I wanted to uh, deal with that as much as I could on the ground and back this colt off of me uh, as much as possible um, 
so I did have to kind of cram him into the wall there a couple of times and just get him respecting my presence again all right here I made a decision as that colt was getting pretty pushy on me and I was having to put him into the wall I ran him more at that period than I normally would have um, and he was also being pretty pushy so I decided laying him down would be something pretty pretty beneficial I do do that to most colts I pretty well decided for the length of time in the video that I probably wouldn't but the colt needed it so we went ahead and elected to do that uh, so he got a little breather in this portion so we didn't work him too hard also he needed to submit now again being a little peculiar this particular colt he went down very easy I was not expecting him to go down as easy uh, which also kind of told me that he wasn't really getting the full effect of it well actually I think we laid this colt down three or four separate times here in the next few minutes um, and, and again that was really just because he hadn't fully submitted uh, a lot of times the horses that don't fight this very hard are the ones that don't get very much out of being laid down whereas the ones that fight it and just don't want to go down and you're in there for 20 minutes trying to get them down they're the ones that go down they stay down they might even get up after you leave them alone and then lay back down again on their own free will uh, and those are the horses that, that laying down really has a big effect on this goat uh, didn't didn't get as much done as I would have liked uh, which is why I do it multiple times and again that's pretty odd normally I'll lay them down once maybe twice three four times pretty pretty odd uh, but that's okay don't don't be scared to be out of the and, and away from what your norm is do what your horse needs I, I really I, I told y'all I was I was really expecting this horse to fight quite a bit. Um, you absolutely can't get the crud kicked out of your lower legs when doing this. Absolutely you can't. You saw how quick this colt is, how quickly he got up right there. I would definitely say that I don't know how tough he's looking. This colt is fairly, he, he is fairly challenging. But this would probably not have been an ideal sort of horse for someone's first or tenth colt to break. I don't know who they normally send their colts to, but I'm kind of glad I got this one. I think, I think we're going to do him some good. lay him down from that side now. Change this up a little bit. This is not something I normally do. But I, again, I, I feel this is what he needs right now. Uh, cross over here. Little bit of a dangerous spot whenever he goes down I could have some feet coming my way I'm doing this see he bit me there little stud I, I'm kind of doing this just accepting the danger as you frequently have to do when you're dealing with horses or particularly young colts All of the safety talk that we, we give y'all, that's not a good position for your leg. I didn't like that at all. All right, now let's see if we can get him over from this position. That's what he needed to do. He's licking and chewing right now. Probably can't see that. This colt needed that. He has relaxed this time. 
than he did those other few. And I, I really have to say, I, I do, I, there's been very few horses I felt like I needed to go down several times like that. Uh, that was certainly not a typical experience for me. But, but a good, good object lesson for y'all about not getting in too much of a rush with your horses and not getting too much following a recipe. You need to learn when to, when to vary, when to get off of that path because what that portion of the recipe was supposed to do didn't get done. It needed to be changed. Nice deep breath right there. by the, the beginning, him being able to take pressure. Me squatting there with him, obviously it was too much for him to allow me to do that earlier. So now I'm increasing the pressure again. Stand up. Alright, here we've pretty well come to the end of what I'm going to do with this colt today for laying him down. <coughs> uh, don't know that we got the full effect that I would have wanted out of that, but you know that's how it goes. We're going to work with him a little more here on on yielding side to side, desensitizing them to the saddle. Uh, here in just a second, I'm going to take the lariat rope and work with him a little bit on that, kind of run him around. Uh, this colt, again, is going to be going into a ranch setting, so him being comfortable with ropes, uh, having that rope hit him and slap him and all is going to be pretty key. I normally do a lot more work with the tarp on a horse. Uh, uh, you know, again, be flexible. Didn't really bother this colt. A whole lot we had bigger fish to fry so so move on to those when we've got them conquered we'll come back now uh, there is a go button under their tail which I just found right there you'll see he bucks quite a bit throughout this or really kicks at the rope uh, one thing I am using pressure and release still so I'll pull on that rope and get it under his tail and he'll buck and kick and I'll just hold what I have and as soon as he quits kicking and he relaxes then I give him the slack so uh, <coughs> You'll see by the end of this little little short clip uh, that he gets pretty comfortable with that rope under his tail and and doesn't really bother him. I actually get where I can, as he's trotting around, I can pull his hip to the inside and he just yields his hip to me rather than kicking at the rope. Uh, I'd pretty well do this to all colts, but especially horses that are gonna gonna be in ranch or roping setting. They they really need to be completely comfortable with that rope around them and. Uh, all, you know that that's going to be a big part of their lives. So you would never want to find find out the hard way while you're riding them that they've got a problem with the, the rope being back there. Now we're fixing to just go ahead and put the snaffle bit on this colt, and uh, we'll be we'll be getting to the ride here pretty quick. I I think I had actually mentioned at earlier points in the video I could have ridden this colt a long time before. Uh, I did elect to actually step up there uh, and that was just a preparation thing all of the, the pushiness and stuff that he had exhibited I didn't really want to carry forth into the saddle so I wanted to take a little extra time with him uh, you know no matter whether you're in a competition or on video or in public whatever you always have a responsibility to do the best that you can for that horse uh, whether or not it fits with Maybe what uh, what outside forces would want to have you be doing. So this is what I felt like the colt needed, and, and so that's what we we did. He's not he's not fighting two battles right now. See how he does kind of raise up in there. So I mean, it would would it would it really surprise anybody if he did that? I scared him a little bit. He came up off of the ground with his front feet. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me at all. So that that's kind of why I'm why I do this. This is strictly a my safety sort of a thing. Uh, I know some people find it a little distasteful to tie a horse's head around. Some people say it's something you should never do. 
my safety trumps that. <laughs> Your safety should trump that sort of stuff too. Someone's opinion of you should have no bearing on your safety. <coughs> Maybe that's a little too philosophical. <coughs> okay, here we're going to speed things up again. I, I really left this colt tied a lot longer than what I should. Again, that's just me talking and trying to express and teach when I should have just been working my horse. Um, we're going to just just go through here I do want to mention that there was nothing that we cut out of this video we, we simply sped certain parts of it up but but you know you you theoretically watch everything that we did uh, <coughs> no hidden doors or anything like that uh, here in just a second we'll start stepping up on the side of this colt and again I don't I don't really do a whole lot different there than anybody else now this colt had showed he was a little touchy so I'm using my knee here to desensitize them <coughs> some of them when you first put your toe in the stirrup you bump them in the belly or in the elbow and uh, that can be a little bit of a touchy situation and this colt had shown that propensity to kick out whenever he got scared and and so that was just a safety before I'm gonna go up I'm gonna make sure I if I touch him with my toe there that we're not gonna have an issue and colt took all of this really really well so I do make sure that as I'm getting up and down and all, I'm also walking the colt up because here in just a second, that's going to become my biggest challenge is to walk him. Feeling better and better about that possibility right now. Again, same thing. I'm never giving him rain really. I'm just, just moving my hand up his neck a hair, a little slack. Pick it up. Why not work on softness, suppleness, and give it to the bridle? Every little thing. Did like how he shifted his feet there? And he was comfortable enough. Now he's fixing to see me out of the other eye. Came up just a hair there. But he's kind of relaxing back and we'll try to do that a time or two. On the very first ride, stand still while I get on you. Work on a little lateral flexion. Now this colt has, throughout the day, he's uh, bitten at me a time or two. Bit my flag at first. At that point in time, I was really thinking that when I go to get on him, he's going to be one that's going to bend his head around and bite my foot. And you have a decision to make at that point. My decision is going to be not to kick him in the mouth. Just let it bite my foot for a day or two. Okay, let's see if we can get him to step around for a two. I am barely touching it with my spur right now. Just kind of rocking my feet on it. He started to move there. I released him. He actually shifted a foot or two. He actually, his first step there was going to be back. Uh, he's licking and chewing right now. Always try. He thought about moving. 
明日Off to one bridle here. Um, he's doing a lot of licking and chewing. Frankly, this is more sitting here and going a little slower than I normally would do. Um, that, that's because I really do want to have a good ride with this coat, and I think he needs that, and I'm willing to give him that. I'm going to give him a rush just because I'm on camera, anything like that. Uh, he may still blow up on me at any moment. I'm ready for that. I'm good with it if he does. Hopefully I'm going to be capable of riding. We'll see. Um, again, I am touching him with spurs right now. I guess I will talk about that a second here. We're not going to really be going somewhere. If you move his feet a little more, I kind of do need to be watching here. But the reason I am going slower with him right now is not because of the bucking portion of things. It's because of that willful, strong, bowed up against me portion of things. I want to be as polite and respectful of the way that I handle him and, and ask him to do things here as I can. I don't want to offend him and get into a stud fight. Now he, he moved right off right there. That was a pretty nice little deal and he's yielding to this bit pretty nicely too. Okay. I'm going to ask him to come this other direction now. See in his eyes, I'm, I'm taking my time. There he shifted. There, I don't know if the camera caught that. He moved his hind quarters just a hair. Full remember the beginnings when I was had the rope from the halter around his hind quarters, getting him to yield to the rope, pivot around. He would pivot to the left, he disengaged every time to the right. So we were fully expecting that in the ride. So you'll note when I, when I was turning to the left. His original inclination, his first several steps and first several tries, he came back over in line with that pivot. His very first move and his very first try here on the right side is to disengage the hind quarters. I'm just making notes. I, I don't have a, a feeling about that, but I just want y'all to see the connection. Ooh, we got a little hump in our back right now. Hopefully we're just going to lick at you and we're going to take us a deep breath here in a second and just relax right out of that. I want, I want to give him a second to think here to soak. <coughs> proud of how well he composed himself. Sometimes those little bitty things are a lot bigger than people think they are. <coughs> he's kind of at a little touch and go point right now. He's either about to get a lot more worked up or he's going to settle in. Now 
he handled himself very well right there. <coughs> a little licking and chewing right here as I pulled him. So I, I wasn't going to force that on him again. That's his less confident side. So he held himself together. <coughs> moved to his confident side. Much, much, much slower than I normally get. Okay, normally I would be probably trotting around this pen by now. Again, we have the inclination back up. When I do ask this colt to back up, does anybody have a guess as to which side I'm going to have him bent to just a little bit? That is good horsemanship. Use that horse's natural inclinations. All right, and here, this colt stayed a little sticky footed and uh, I was being real weary about getting into a fight with him. This ride wound up lasting a lot longer than I wanted it to, but I, I thought it was pretty pretty important to take my time through here and get him to relax without putting too much pressure on him and, and getting him to start pushing back on me. I think we did a pretty good job of that uh, throughout, although, again, it took a long time. That wasn't really part of my plan. He decided that we were going to go to his weaker side here, but here in that little filly kind of gave him the confidence to do that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. This first ride has a whole lot of just little wandering, rambling sort of stuff to it. I would kind of like y'all to note how much I'm not pulling on his head. He's getting a little more confident right there. He feels, he feels comfortable enough with me being out here that he can go talk to some pretty little girls. Check me out. I, I was in the middle of asking him to go. I'm just going to let him check me out. All of those little opportunities for him to get more and more comfortable, just fine. <coughs> Incidentally, having to get on a colt for a ride like this and then cough is a bad feeling, but the worst feeling in the world is getting up here and before you have stepped him off a step having to sneeze and knowing that when you make that big violent action your eyes are also going to be closed. <coughs> I've had that happen to me three different times. What are the odds of that? <laughs> the other worst feeling in the world is while you're in the middle of doing this and people are watching someone decides that they're going to help you. That also is not a real good feeling. Yeah, uh, with that person helping you, I remember there was a day I was on this really explosive filly and a guy decided he needed to grab my rope and start smacking it around trying to move my filly. I was uh, a little rude to that guy, I believe. <laughs> You'll see the stop I've already got on this one. Is that incredible? How talented am I? I mean, that was I'll just point out here that I learned to ride bucking horses from that border, that uh, monkey that rides at the border collie in the rodeos. Check this out. Now this is our icebreaker. Not a big deal. How'd y'all like that buck and ride, huh? That little monkey would be very proud of me. Uh, now here, this colt uh, needed to move his feet a whole lot more and pretty well let him pick the direction. <coughs> Again, not how I typically like to do it. I normally like to get the direction too, but <coughs> just part of me being a little leery about getting in a fight with this colt. Uh, it was more important that he freed his feet up and then I'll get the direction 
in a minute. So don't be too married to your, your normal way of doing things. Be adjustable. Be flexible. Y'all can kind of see my legs. I am, you know, kicking on him pretty decent right now. And I am using my inside leg, like right here. He's coming off of the rail. I've got my, red, my leg in him. He slowed down. Oh, he yielded his shoulder right there. Now we just need to get that at the trot. The first stride is not too soon to work on leg Again, and there it was. It's very, very minor right now, but it's, it's there. Okay, here we just start working on trying to trot our figure eights. We're just looking for a good place to end the ride, basically. That was closer to trotting all the way through that figure eight. Let's see if maybe we get it this time. Let's see. 
a little bit. That was a step back with the front foot there. Well, that was a step, but it was in to me, not away from me. So I can I can actually cheat here. Oh, there it was. There it was. It was a little, but it was a start. Okay. Now we'll move these shoulders out. There, very nice, very nice. And we'll move these shoulders in. Very nice again. And these shoulders out. There. And again, the hindquarters come first with this coat every single time right there. But if I just keep waiting until the shoulders come and I only release there, they'll be right there with me. Okay, so now let's do the this toughest one, moving the shoulders across this way. Just hold a guy. That was pretty close. I should have released right there, but I didn't like what his head was doing. There, that'll work, but I'm, I'm gonna, that wasn't much, so I'm pulling this head right back around. Still getting him off of my left foot. I'm moving his shoulder out, which is the easier way. Okay, so right foot, and look at the turn he's already developing right there, y'all. And coming across here, look at that, look at that, look at that. And let's see if we can stop him. doing there he's gonna play with that bit he's gonna just think oh my gosh oh my gosh this thing's got me by the tongue and then he's gonna go hold on wait this means something and then he stops and we'll just keep at that until that thought of hold on wait this means something it's gonna come to him a whole lot quicker Shoulder off of my foot. There we go. It wasn't much, but it was a little. And just roll right back to me. Come on, buddy. Shoulder across this way. How quick, I mean, that coat really has that one. I hope you all can see. That one's just dang near right there each time. Try to cross this way again. There. So he's getting that way. Another step or two back. Not near as much face stuff this time. He's, he's, he's having a little trouble with that one. So I'm going to just ask for it two or three times in a row. be a little easier for him to know what the next response is when he just had it there. Oh, he leaned. He's so, he came so close to just coming right with that step. Well, that was nice. Now, I'm pretty well done. This little guy. Welcome to the world, little man.
usually let them carry the saddle back to the tack room for me. But this little couple did pretty good. I'm pretty proud of him. You can see he's licking and chewing already. He sees this. We're finally going to get this contraption off of him. All right. Again, I would very much like to thank Road to the Horse for allowing some of us new and lesser known people to have a shot at the wild card deal. I would especially like to thank the Gray Ranch and Mr. Kent Ledoux for allowing me the use of this very nice colt to demonstrate some of my horsemanship techniques and skills. Uh, if you have any more questions about me, you can learn more about me or uh, contact me through my website, dolphinhorsemanship.com. Thank you.